Hey guys, I wanted to show you how to do kind of a new visualization technique called an ISO surface today. So we have a very similar model to the one we worked with before. Um, it's not exactly the same. I actually remade it for this video. But um, the inner cutout cylinder here, I guess here's a better view. The inner cutout cylinder here is going to be heated on the inside wall and the bottom of that um, down here to 370 degrees and the top and the sides are going to be cooled to 300 degrees Kelvin um, and the bottom is not heated it's adiabatic so a little bit different from our last setup um, you can get to this um, kind of point in the model by following some of my previous videos but now we're going to create a new derived part called an isosurface. Now an isosurface essentially shows only the um, the m kind of cells that are uh, th it shows the cells of a certain property like temperature or velocity or pressure but only the cells that are greater than a certain threshold value. So uh, when you right click on derived part and click create an ISO surface. It's going to ask you for your part. We're going to keep it as body one. And then I click no displayer. And then we're going to uh, choose the scalar um, function. And that's going to be temperature for this model. Um, so then we will take this ISO value and we're going to set it to 310. Because it looks like, you know, a lot of the model, well, you can't tell too, too well right now. but show you in a second. A lot of the model is around 310, but some is higher and some is lower, so it'll maybe give us a good differentiation. So when I when I apply the ISO surface to my scalar scene, all I have to do is click on the parts node and change the part that is being expressed in this scene to the ISO surface instead of the section planes. And voila, we have our isosurface. So like I said, it's only showing the cells that are at the temperature um, equal to or above um, 310, which is what we set it at. We could change that to be 305, and it'll show more of the model. Um, or, you know, 315. Oops, <laughs> not 3015. 315. There you go. So well, we're going to keep it at 310, because that's a good kind of in-between value. And then... This, this model, if you look at the residuals, um, and I also created a plot of the average temperature um, down here. Let's see. Um, pretty converged, you know. Uh, it's just kind of bouncing around, oscillating around the converged value. Again, this is just an example. These residuals would need to be much lower to have a truly confident solution. But if we hit play, uh, we can see the isosurface kind of move around as the the model oscillates around its converged value and so you can do this for velocity or pressure temperature any any property that you'd like that might be interesting to your model a lot of times people do this in channel flow um, and they show the different high or low velocity positions inside of the channel and it's it's pretty interesting so that's how you do isosurfaces